I'm Rochelle Grossman with today's health news. Are you one of the millions whose morning cup of joe is a daily ritual? If you're a colon cancer survivor, several cups could really be a lifesaver. You see, a recent study found that colon cancer patients were less likely to have their cancer come back after treatment if they regularly drank caffeinated coffee. Researchers studied about 1,000 patients with stage 3 colon cancer. They found that patients who drank four or more cups of coffee each day were the least likely to have their colon cancer come back. People who drank two to three cups a day showed some benefit, and those who drank one cup or less had no benefits. The team theorized that caffeine may affect the hormonal processes that decrease inflammation, which is tied to cancer. Always talk to your doctor about what's best for you. Did you know driving while dehydrated may be just as dangerous as drunk driving? A study found that men who didn't have enough water to drink made as many mistakes on the road as those under the influence of alcohol. So don't minimize your fluid intake on long trips, just make those pit stops as planned. Tamiflu is a prescription medication used to treat certain types of flu in those who have had symptoms of the flu for no longer than two days. This medication is also used to prevent certain strains of the flu if you have been exposed to someone who has it or when there is a flu outbreak. Tamiflu belongs to a group of drugs called neuroamidase inhibitors. These work by stopping the spread of the flu virus in the body. Tamiflu helps shorten the time that flu symptoms, such as a stuffy or runny nose, sore throat, cough, muscle or joint aches, tiredness, headache, fever, and chills last. This medication comes as a capsule and as an oral suspension. It is usually taken once or twice a day. The number of times you take Tamiflu will depend on if you are taking Tamiflu to treat the flu or taking Tamiflu to prevent the flu. It can be taken with or without food. Common side effects include nausea, vomiting, and stomach pain. When it's summertime, kids tend to spend their days playing outside or splashing around at the pool. And all that activity is a good thing. But how can you help keep kids' activity level up when school starts again? I'm Gabe Garza and this is a health feature. According to pediatrician Dr. Stephanie Spaeth of Baylor Scott & White Health in Dallas, Texas, keeping kids physically active is important for more than just basic health reasons, such as heart health or maintaining a healthy weight. Physical exercise has many benefits for kids and adults alike. It helps increase their self-esteem. It helps improve their quality of sleep. It decreases their risk of anxiety and depression, and it keeps them healthy. The U.S. Office of Disease Prevention and Health Promotion recommends that children have at least one hour of moderate to vigorous physical exercise each day. Dr. Spaeth expands. I think the most important thing is not having necessarily 60 minutes a day but of limiting the time that they are just sitting around and doing nothing. They need to be up, they need to be moving, they need to be playing, they need to be outside. Keep them active, that's the most important thing. According to Dr. Spaeth, an important key to keeping kids active is simply giving them time to do so. This can be especially important to remember during the school year, when the amount of unstructured time available can drop significantly. Most kids do not need to be engaged in a formal exercise activity. Most kids have plenty of energy and if given the opportunity to play, they'll run around and they'll play and they'll burn off all those calories and get the exercise they need. The important thing is making sure they have the opportunity to do this. According to the Let's Move initiative, sponsored by First Lady Michelle Obama, children who are surrounded by people interested in exercise or who feel supported to get active are more likely to participate in physical activity. For children who may not be inclined to be physically active on their own, it can certainly be helpful for parents to engage in activities with them. Plan family outings, go for walks, go for bike rides together. In general, Dr. Spates says the most important thing is that parents set a good example for their children, and they take the time to exercise and keep themselves fit and healthy. So even after those freewheeling summer days are gone, keep up the fitness to make the whole family happier and healthier. Did you know you can get injured raking those autumn leaves if you don't take the necessary precautions? 
According to the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission, 38,000 adults were injured in raking-related injuries in 2012. Try slipping on a pair of gloves featuring grip material to avoid blisters. A padded rake handle can also help avoid pain from gripping too tight. If you have them, protective glasses will protect your eyes from any falling debris, and wearing shoes with good traction and support may help keep you from slipping and falling. Natural supplements may seem safer than prescription medications, but there are a few things to consider before you run out to the store and buy some. Supplements are regulated as foods and not as medications by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, otherwise known as the FDA. This means the manufacturers do not have to prove they are effective, nor do they have to provide safety information. Also, the amount of each ingredient may be inconsistent between products. There have been some instances where herbal supplements do not contain any of the herbs on their labels. Instead, they have been found to contain ingredients like powdered rice, asparagus, and houseplants, and in some cases, substances that could be dangerous to those with allergies. Natural supplements can cause side effects and can even cause you harm. Kava kava, used most often for anxiety, can lead to liver damage including hepatitis and liver failure. Natural supplements can also interact with your medications. One good example is St. John's wort. St. John's wort is used most often for depression and can interact with multiple medications and ultimately can cause you harm. In addition, some supplements and or vitamins can affect the way your body absorbs and gets rid of other medications. With this being said, when asked what medications you are taking, it is very important you mention any supplements and or vitamins to your pharmacist and doctor. In addition, if you're looking to use a natural supplement, talk to your doctor or pharmacist about which ones are safe to use. Ongliza is a prescription medication used along with diet and exercise to treat type 2 diabetes. Ongliza belongs to a group of drugs called dipeptylpeptidase 4 or DPP4 inhibitors. It works by increasing the amount of insulin made by the body after meals and by decreasing the amount of glucose production by the liver. This medication comes in tablet form to take by mouth. It is usually taken once daily with or without food. Do not split or cut Ongliza tablets. Swallow the tablets whole. Common side effects of Ongliza include upper respiratory tract infections, urinary tract infection, and headache. I'm Gabe Garza with today's Health News. Are you a back or stomach sleeper? The way you sleep may be linked to the likelihood of neurological decline. Researchers found that side sleeping compared to back or stomach sleeping may more effectively remove brain waste and reduce the risk of Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and other neurological diseases. The brain has a cleansing process called the glymphatic system. This process clears waste by exchanging fluid chemicals in the brain. If this waste is not properly disposed of, the chances of neurological diseases can increase. So far, researchers have only looked at mice and said human studies are still needed. You may know that calcium is key for strong bones, but did you know it's almost useless without vitamin D to help your body absorb it? Taken with calcium, vitamin D can help prevent soft bones in children and fragile, misshapen bones in adults. Your body makes vitamin D naturally with sun exposure, but you can also find it in some fish, mushrooms, enriched milk, OJ, and cereal. I'm Shelby Cullen and with today's health news. We may know when our posture isn't the greatest, but it's something we also may shrug off. But did you know that bad posture may put you at risk for injury, pain, and strain? Mayo Clinic has more. If you don't have the best posture, you're gonna be more prone to have muscle tightness and joint stiffness. And when you have those things, you're more likely to have those muscle imbalances, asymmetries, and that can really create pain or injury down the road. And then even eventually, if you have really bad posture for a long period of time, you know, let's say you're really hunched over when you get into an older age, then you're gonna be more likely to have uh, bad balance and higher risk for falls because your center of gravity is off. The main things that would develop because of bad posture would be um, pain or injury, so shoulder impingement, low back pain, neck pain, um, 
hip pain, uh, and then just overall feeling of joint stiffness or muscle tightness. Zigduo XR is a prescription medication used to control blood sugar levels in people with type 2 diabetes. It is a single product containing two medications, dapagliflozin and metformin. Dapagliflozin is a part of a new class of drugs that work in the kidney to block a protein called SGLT2. By blocking this protein, the drug can remove excess glucose or sugar and calories in the urine, which then helps lower blood sugar levels. Metformin belongs to a group of drugs called biguanides, which work by helping your body respond better to the insulin it makes naturally, decreasing the amount of sugar your liver makes, and decreasing the amount of sugar your intestines absorb. This medication comes in an extended release tablet form and is taken typically once a day in the morning with food. Do not chew, crush, divide, or break tablets. Swallow tablets whole. Common side effects of Zigduo XR include the common cold, urinary tract infections, diarrhea, and headache. Beginning June 1st, the TMF Health Quality Institute launched a 13-week summer health challenge. The goal? To help their staff get healthier. It makes sense that healthier people are healthier workers, so the company offered fitness trackers at 75% off. The results? See for yourself. Marlon Revelette works as an analyst and developer. His day-to-day -day job is pretty sedentary. A few weeks ago, he would have never imagined doing this during lunch. The TMF Summer Health Challenge is a 13-week wellness program that combines the use of a Fitbit with lunchtime exercise and Wow Wednesdays, featuring weekly weigh-ins, health education sessions like this nutrition label reading roundtable, and healthy snacks, hoping to get workers inspired about healthy living. I think this is a natural, obvious benefit for the companies because healthier uh, employees can be more productive, fewer medical claims, fewer sick days. It gets them out of their office for the day and it gets them like we'll go on a hike in a little bit. It gets them outside so instead of sitting in a stuffy desk in a cubicle for 10 hours a day going okay what time is it? Is it time to go home yet? They get back to their office, they get ready to work again, they're focused, they've got more energy, they're not dragging at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. In just about eight weeks Marlon's lost more than 10 pounds. He never expected that or the many benefits of the program. Today I'll be um, trying a quinoa, which is not something that's been a staple in our house. One of the really great things about these Wow Wednesdays are that employees get to try foods that they maybe would have never tried before. This here is a mint, mango, blueberry, quinoa salad. How many of us would have put this combination together on our own? And all of these beautiful produce items, well, soon they're going to be blended together into a delicious, healthy juice. Marlon's getting me to try the juice, too. And that's the point, sharing knowledge and a newfound appreciation for healthy living. And for the business... They're going to get better, happier work environment. They're going to get more productivity. You know, if you're happy and in a good mood and you have a lot of energy, you're going to get more work done. And one final unanticipated benefit, networking with coworkers, people who were strangers before the program that Marlon now calls friends. For Rx Wiki, I'm Rochelle Grossman. Very nice job, y'all. Rosuvastatin is a prescription medication used to treat high cholesterol levels and to prevent heart disease. Rosuvastatin belongs to a group of drugs called HMG-CoA reductase inhibitors, also known as statins. Statins help to lower cholesterol levels in the body. This medication comes in tablet form and is taken by mouth once a day, with or without food. Common side effects are headache, muscle ache, abdominal pain, weakness, and nausea.
I'm Shelby Collin and with today's health news. No one knows for sure whether they will develop Alzheimer's disease or AD or not, but certain factors may increase your risk. A new study has identified nine potentially modifiable risk factors that may contribute to more than 75% of all AD cases worldwide. The nine risk factors with the strongest links were obesity, tobacco use, narrowing of the arteries, type 2 diabetes, less education, high levels of homocysteine, depression, high blood pressure, and physical frailty. Taking medications to lower blood pressure, cholesterol, and inflammation reduce these risk factors. The most important preventive factors, however, were diet and lifestyle changes, both of which may also prevent heart disease, diabetes, and high blood pressure. There are many benefits to exercising during pregnancy. Your obstetrician gynecologist, ob -GYN, will be your best resource to help you maintain a healthy exercise routine during pregnancy. The American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists recommends being active and exercising for at least 30 minutes on most days of the week during pregnancy. Exercise can help to reduce backaches, constipation, bloating, and swelling. Additionally, it may help prevent or treat gestational diabetes, which is diabetes that arises during pregnancy. Exercise can also increase your energy, improve your mood, and help you sleep better during pregnancy. Some examples of safe exercises during pregnancy include walking and swimming. If you engage in a certain type of physical activity before you became pregnant, ask your ob -GYN about continuing during pregnancy. He or she may need to modify your exercise routine. Always ask your ob -GYN any questions you may have about exercising during pregnancy. Did you know that storing medicine in your medicine cabinet may not actually be the best idea? The heat and moisture from the bathroom can cause medicines to become less potent, break down, and expire early. According to Consumer Med Safety, prescriptions should be kept in a cool, dry place and always out of the reach of children. Celebrex, the brand name for Celecoxib, is a prescription medication used to treat pain, arthritis, and painful menstrual periods. Celebrex belongs to a group of medications called NSAIDs. These work by blocking chemicals in the body that cause pain and inflammation. Celebrex comes in capsule form and is taken by mouth once or twice a day with or without food. Common side effects are stomach pain, upset stomach, and diarrhea. For more information on this medication and others, explore the RxWiki encyclopedia on the web or on your mobile device. RxWiki can also be found on your favorite social media platform. I'm Shelby Collin and with today's health news. For those in fast-paced lifestyles, lunch is often an afterthought, but on-the-go eaters may want to think twice about their habits. A new study from the UK found that eating on the go may increase food intake later in the day and ultimately lead to weight gain, especially for dieters. The lead study author said, quote, even though walking had the most impact, any form of distraction, including eating at our desks, can lead to weight gain. When we don't fully concentrate on our meals and the process of taking in food, we fall into a trap of mindless eating, where we don't track or recognize the food that has just been consumed. According to the WHO, more than 1.9 billion adults were overweight in 2014. Speak to your doctor about a healthy diet for you. Your immune system is an amazing network of cells, tissues, and organs, all working together to protect your body and defend it against invaders. But your body isn't able to fight off every invader. Poor nutrition, stress, not getting enough exercise or sleep can break down your immune system. But here's what you can do to give it a boost. Drink plenty of water. Without enough, your body can't work properly. Water also helps in the production of lymph, a fluid that's part of your immune system and carries white blood cells throughout your body. The foods you eat can boost your immune system too. Beets, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, kale, cabbage, and spinach are all great choices packed with antioxidants. According to the National Institutes of Health, antioxidants may prevent or delay some types of cell damage. Keeping a healthy gut is important to keeping a strong immune system. 
In fact, about 80% of your body's immune cells are located in your digestive system. Yogurt is a great way to get in those beneficial probiotics. Vitamin D has been shown to strengthen the immune system too. Your skin produces vitamin D when it's exposed to sunlight. Spending time outside increases your body's natural ability to produce vitamin D from the sun. Exercise is a win-win for the immune system. People who exercise are shown to have better functioning white blood cells. Exercise may also slow down your body's release of stress-related hormones. At the same time, a workout allows your body to release endorphins, those awesome natural hormones that promote a sense of relaxation and well-being. Not getting enough sleep may also leave you vulnerable to illness. Your body uses sleep as a way to heal itself. During sleep, your immune system releases certain proteins that regulate immunity and inflammation. And finally, remember that chronic stress and depression will work to weaken your immune system. Research shows that a steady supply of stress hormones like cortisol and adrenaline are not good for your health. So why not try to do all of those things that help you enjoy life? Take time to laugh, strengthen your relationships, volunteer, and do all of those things that make you feel good. When you think of healing from serious and critical burns, one thing that may not come to mind is nutrition. But did you know that this aspect of treatment is vital to getting your body restored? I'm Rochelle Grossman, and this is a health feature. According to research from the National Center for Biotechnology Information, more than one million burn injuries happen in the United States annually, and metabolic changes are possible following severe burns. According to this research, quote, severely burned catabolic patients can lose up to 25% of total body mass after acute severe burn injury. A 10% loss of total body mass leads to immune dysfunction, while a 20% loss leads to decreased wound healing. So providing sustenance to protect against body mass loss is vital to the overall healing process. The Ohio State Comprehensive Burn Center takes nutritional needs for burn patients very seriously. Its burn team has been named among the best of the best by Critical Care Nutrition at the Clinical Evaluation Research Unit in Ontario in its International Nutrition Survey. Dr. Larry Jones, Associate Professor of Clinical Surgery and Director of the Comprehensive Burn Center at The Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center expands. We don't want the body to use itself. So increasing the diet, increasing protein in the diet, getting the patients to eat, giving them supplemental feedings is a way of providing them with the proteins and the calories that they need to heal their burn wounds. Once inside the surgical intensive care unit, Dr. Jones and team start this healing process via feeding tube. Patients weighed and calories are monitored and adjustments are made on a weekly basis. Eventually, it is switched to an oral diet during the day with the supplemental feeding during the night. Then, an oral diet packed full of protein. Director of Nutrition Support Services and Medical Director of Ohio State's Level 1 Trauma Center, Dr. David Evans, has more on the specific calorie needs of severe burn patients. We find that they need about 140 percent of their regular caloric intake, so closer to say 3,000 calories when they normally would be taking 2,000 calories. Also, they need two to three or even four times as much protein as they would in an uninjured state. Patient Troy Patchen, who is receiving this nutritional care after receiving second and third degree burns, explains how much he's being fed each day. My doctors told me that the feeding tube and stuff like that gives me probably the same equivalent to eating like 15 to 20 Big Macs a day and the protein and everything. He notes it has helped, as when he first arrived, his appetite was nothing compared to what it once was. According to a university press release, this feeding solution is full of protein, vitamin D, omega-3 fatty acids, among other nutrients. So what happens when a patient is discharged or their wound appears to be healed? When does the body no longer need this additional protein? Dr. Larry Jones has more. Many of us believe that that nutritional support needs to be provided even beyond the time that the burn wound appears to be healed. So it may last for, for months following the burn wound's healing. 
Even those patients where the skin grafts have completely healed, those patients require nutritional support in the form of protein and other calories uh, to make sure that that wound continues to heal. It takes a burn wound anywhere from 12 to 18 months to completely heal microscopically. So the nutritional support we feel is important for at least that period of time. Ask your doctor for more information on the latest treatment advancements for your condition. Simvastatin is a prescription medication used to treat high cholesterol, high triglycerides, and diseases of the heart and blood vessels. Simvastatin is in a class of medications called HMG-CoA reductase inhibitors, or statins. It works by slowing the production of cholesterol in the body. This should decrease the amount of cholesterol that may build up on the walls of the arteries and block blood flow to the heart, brain, and other parts of the body. This medication comes in tablet form and is usually taken once daily at bedtime with or without food. Common side effects of simvastatin include muscle and joint soreness, nausea, and constipation. Take this medication only as directed. For more information, download the RxWiki mobile app. I'm Shelby Collin with today's health news. If you're like many people, a forecast of sunny skies and 75 degrees is the makings of a perfect afternoon. But before you get out and enjoy it, you may want to consider the risks. A recent study from Brown University found that emergency room visits and deaths may increase when temperatures rise above 75 degrees. Heat-related emergency department visits increase 3.3% when temperatures reach 75 degrees. At 85 degrees, that number climbed to 23.9%. The study team found one unexpected finding was heat-related illnesses occurred across the age spectrum, with the strongest link found in patients ages 18 to 64. Make sure to stay hydrated and take frequent breaks if you're planning a day outside. With each new season comes new bugs and potentially infectious diseases. Now most bug bites and stings are mild and cause not much more than itching and discomfort, but there is always a chance for more serious infections and allergic reactions. But do you know what signs to look out for when more serious infections occur? We had a chance to speak with Dr. Candida Suffrage of Baylor Scott & White Healthcare in Georgetown, Texas. She goes over how to prevent bug bites and what to look out for when a more serious allergic reaction occurs. Generally, insect bites are not serious and they're what we call self-limited. So people can take an antihistamine to kind of help with the itching, maybe use a topical cream. However, if a patient has any symptoms other than the local injury, they should definitely present to their doctor. Those symptoms could be a fever, it could be a spreading rash. Some other symptoms to look out for are swelling of the lips, eyelids, or throat, dizziness, faintness or confusion, and rapid heartbeat. If these signs are visible, seek medical care right away. If it's possible, take the bug or insect with you if you don't know what it is, so doctors can better understand how to treat you. Dr. Suffrage says that for children and older adults, because their immune system is usually weaker, it's important to keep a closer eye on them. I think in general, diseases are more serious in young children, so less than five years old, and older individuals, over 65. It's really a matter of how healthy their immune system is, so certainly young children are still developing that immune system. And there are some immunosuppressive medications and other drugs that can affect their immune system. Also, as your age, your immune system isn't quite as healthy as it used to be. Of course, the first step to prevent an infection or virus is to prevent a bug bite or sting in the first place. It's really important to, in general, stay away from areas that have a lot of insects, but if you're going to be around those areas, keep your skin covered with some light clothing and then certainly wear insect repellent. So we know that mosquitoes breed and live in stagnant water, so it's very important that you don't keep standing water around the house. Some other tips to keep bugs away and off of you include staying indoors at dawn and dusk, when flying insects are most likely to hit. And to avoid stings from honeybees, wasps, and yellow jackets, avoid bright colors and floral patterns. I think what's most important is you remember that you can get an infection from any kind of an insect bite. Bug bites are going to happen. So when they do, just be aware of your symptoms. And if the young or elderly get bit or stung, watch them a little more closely to make sure they're okay. Remember to wear loose-fitting clothing when in areas where bugs could be, use insect repellent, and reapply it if you perspire or decide to get in the water. 
If you do notice or have any symptoms, seek medical care right away. For RxWiki, I'm Gabe Garza. Did you know that skipping your morning meal may up your risk for heart disease? It's true. According to the American Heart Association, those who skipped breakfast may be at a greater risk for heart attack and heart disease. Skipping breakfast may lead to other risk factors as well, including obesity, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol. Skipping meals can also cause adverse effects to the metabolism. So make sure to take time for breakfast each and every day. I'm Gabe Garza with today's health news. We know sleep is essential for working bodies and working minds, so it's important to note how vital good rest is now that school is back in session. What can you do to ensure your child is ready to excel in the classroom? Take note from Mayo Clinic Children's Center pediatric neurologist and sleep specialist, Dr. Suresh Kodagal, on how much sleep your kiddo needs and how to achieve it. Shifting uh, the morning wake-up time, that's the best one to manipulate. Uh, don't worry about the um, time to go to sleep at night, but just work on the morning wake up time and everything else will take, its, take place on its own. But if the morning wake up time is at 11 a.m., then move it every three or four days by about a half hour, so ten, make it 10.30, then 10 a.m., then 9.38. So moving it backwards uh, step by step would be a good thing. When the child wakes up, have them exposed to a flood of light, sunlight. Uh, these days is very good because the sunlight uh, exposure immediately upon awakening also helps to set the biological clock of the brain. Uh, and uh, the other thing is that children should avoid any napping during the day so that way they build up their sleep pressure. And if they build up the sleep pressure during the day, they'll be able to fall asleep quicker uh, at night as well. I think it's a good idea to avoid uh, exposure to electronic media in the uh, half hour or hour prior to bedtime. Um, people used to say two hours, but I, I think it's really very hard to have a child uh, stay away from electronic media for two hours, but certainly I think for about a half hour to an hour before bedtime, avoiding anything electronic. The light that is emitted by the electronic uh, device may also suppress uh, melatonin secretion. Uh, melatonin is the uh, sleep-inducing hormone that is secreted by the brain and it is very sensitive to even low quantities of light, low intensities of light. So the light from a, uh, an electronic device might suppress melatonin secretion also. Some children have lots lots of worries and things on their mind. For those kids, it's probably a good idea to keep a little diary. They should write down all their fears, worries, two items in the diary and they should do this about two, two and a half hours prior to the desired uh, bedtime. You know, the bed for a child is only to sleep in. If they want to uh, read, you know, if they want to work on their computer or chat with friends, they should do that sitting in a chair in their room but not in the bed because that dilutes the, uh, the meaning of the bed in the child's mind. Xanax, the brand name form of alprazolam, is a prescription medication used to treat anxiety and panic disorder. Xanax belongs to a group of drugs called benzodiazepines, which work by decreasing abnormal excitement in the brain. This medication comes as an immediate release tablet and as an extended release tablet. The regular tablet is taken up to four times a day. The extended release must be swallowed whole and is usually taken once a day in the morning. They both can be taken with or without food. Common side effects include drowsiness, tiredness, and appetite changes. Do not drive or operate heavy machinery until you know how Xanax affects you. Always take this medication only as prescribed. Keep up to date with medication information by following RxWiki on your favorite social media platforms. Did you know that long commute to the office each morning may impact your health? One study found that long commutes impacted workers' waist size, body mass index, blood pressure, and metabolic scores. Another study found that, even with weekly exercise, those who commuted gained three pounds more than those who didn't. Rather than driving, consider riding the bus or train. Using public transit may make commuting less stressful, because instead of focusing on the road, you can relax, sleep, or even start working. 
If public transit isn't convenient for you, carpooling is another great alternative.